When I was at the classic car show in London, I came across four very different salespeople. And in today's video, which I consider to be a very important and interesting video, I would like to break down their four different sales techniques and see what they did really well and what they didn't do so well. So first, I want to start off with a girl that was selling some kind of heat pack. And she initially must have seen me walking with my camera at the Land Rover stand. And I liked the way she grabbed my attention. It was a very risque kind of uh, way of doing it. Because when you do that and almost make a fool of yourself, I would say, you have two options. You have the option of failing miserably or attracting the attention of the person. Probably if you're a girl and you're doing that kind of dance to a guy, you have a higher chance of attracting their attention than if you were doing that as a girl to another girl. So what does she do? She is holding out the physical product that she's selling or a sample of the physical product. And She's done quite well so far, so she's attracted my attention and she's saying that I'll have some reservations at first, albeit jokingly, I'm saying that the thing looks toxic and she's putting my reservations and my doubts at ease, saying that it is not and she's inviting me to touch the thing that she's holding. Now, I want to pause here and I want to tell you something very interesting. If I was her, and this is lessons for you guys, and it's it's obviously it's important to remember that at this kind of um, high um, energy, if you will, event, it's very difficult to try and remember everything. However, there are three types of people in the world. I mean, there are much more, but let's say if we want to break them down into three um, in terms of NLP, there are the auditory, the kinesthetic, and the visual type of people. And she, with her sales pitch, is basically solely aiming for the person that likes feeling things and touching things. And I get that. Her pitch is obviously to feel that because it is a heat pack and see how you feel. However, I would probably have done it slightly differently in that I would try and deduce from the prospect, i.e. me, whether he or she is a visual person or a feely person or an auditory person. In that case, you can have a much better result when you're selling to that person. So rather than insisting on me feeling it, which actually I'm not a kinesthetic person, I'm, I'm not a feely person as such, I'm more a visual person, she probably would have done a lot better had she asked me to come to the stand and have a look at all the things that are there. So have a look at these look at the colors, look how good they look. She probably would have got a better conversation going and a better result than me touching it. Now you're asking, well, how would she know what type you are? She would have been able to know that very easily by asking a very simple question from me. It could be any random question. So it could be, oh, did you like that Range Rover there? Because I'd just come uh, from the Range Rover stand opposite. And whatever answer I would have given, she would have looked to see what direction I've looked as I was thinking about the answer. And that would give her a clue as to what kind of person I am. So had I looked up in order to give her her answer, as in which Range Rover I liked, um, I would have been visual. Had I looked to the sides, I would have been auditory. So I like hearing things more. Um, and had I looked down, I would have been a more kind of kinesthetic, feely person. She didn't do that. Of course, she didn't do that. Very few people do that. And her sales pitch, well, I wasn't really interested anyway, went kind of well until um, A, I questioned her about why she's there um, in a car show with that. And she actually did a good recovery in that she said the reason being that you get a backache in the car and you need something warm. And you could kind of see that it's not going anywhere. Now, would, would you say that I was a prospect for her or I would buy something from her? Well, maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. The thing is, I thought I wasn't going to buy anything at this show, but as it transpired later on, I did come across someone that was much better and did sell me something. Feet in the winter. No. Oh, but it's reusable. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> The next sales girl was very, very interesting. She was very polite, 
very charming. She saw me coming from the other stand, so she was very good in grabbing me while I was hot and in the mood for potentially maybe buying something. And she was really good in that she actually did the most amazing thing you can do as a salesperson, which is not talk about your product at all and become the prospect's best friend. So she, whether she was genuinely interested in my camera or the microphone or not, that's the line that she took. And she was really good at it. She looked very, very interested in my camera and in the microphone. And she managed to really hold my interest with all her questions and talking about the camera and the microphone. She was really good. She basically is the ideal salesperson in that she gets you to talk about something and becomes your best friend. Now you're asking, okay, so if she's the ideal salesperson, why didn't she sell you something? Correct? Well, you tell me. <laughs> she didn't sell me something because she did not attempt at any stage to sell me anything to the point that when I walked away from her, I was wondering, did she actually have something to sell? And was she on an actual stand? So great intro, really good, great conversation, great everything, apart from the fact that I wouldn't even say she didn't close well, because she didn't even open well. <laughs> so I really don't know what uh, her game was, but um, kudos to you for really coming across very friendly, uh, really charming, really well liked, um, I would have got into a conversation about the product with her had she done an opening um, for the sale, but she didn't. So in the end, I ended up walking away. Um, she obviously gained some knowledge about microphones, but I gained no knowledge from her whatsoever. Um, a bit of a poor ending. Good. <laughs> um, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Fantastic. The next salesperson is a proper salesperson who comes from a family of salespeople and you wouldn't expect anything less than perfect pitching and proper sales techniques from him. So this is going to be very interesting to analyze the sales techniques of none other than Mr. Carl Hartley, the son of Tom Hartley, who's been in the car game for some 45 years. Here he is. Hello, mate. How are you? Hi. Nice to see you. And you? And you? Hey, keep it. Despite being in a conversation, Carl knows very well to keep his eyes moving around, looking for potential customers, because he is at a show after all. And he notices me straight away. He knows me from before. And of course, a camera means free publicity. And Carl is very good at that. So he comes straight away. Now, if you notice, he is a genuine person in that when he smiles and he says hello, his eyes smile and his mouth smiles, which means that is a genuine smile. And from what I can see, he's happy to see me. Of course, I am a prospect for a potential car. So I guess as a car salesman, he would be happy to see me. But generally, he is a charming guy, as you'll see in a minute. Yeah, all right. I'm Good. vlogging. Oh, oh, you're vlogging? Yeah, Am I live vlogging. on your vlog? Yeah, because I'd finished up and then I thought you're going to be upset if I don't put you in there. Oh, I'm so. always upset if you don't put me on your vlog. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I've just filmed the whole thing and I'm going to go up to the VIP area, man. Oh, there's a VIP area? Yeah, it's just up there. You just go oh, that's not pretentious it. at all, is it? <laughs> no, cool. I'll see you up there then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be up there in a minute. <laughs> now, Carl is quite a funny person and when you kind of crack a joke, he goes along with it and he doesn't really get offended by it when I said that I'm going to the pretentious place and he should probably be there in a minute as well. And also, if you notice, he is still, even though he's engaged in the conversation with me, looking and saying hello to other people as well. And that is quite a skill to be able to have everything under control when you're at a show like this, which is very busy and well, a crazy place to be. Yeah, then. Uh, right and drive UK supplied Daytona. Okay. Uh, European supplied VAC qualifying P1. Yeah, I saw that at Cars and Coffee I was saying earlier. That yeah, I was in that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It runs, yeah. Um, yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a really nice. One of the most important skills you can have as a salesperson is to have very, very, very good knowledge of your product. 
if you know your product really well you will be very good at selling it because ultimately people are looking for leaders and they're looking for knowledge and they want to know that you know what you're talking about even if they don't so knowing your product well is very important and of course as you can see and you wouldn't expect anything less Carl knows his products extremely well and describes every last bit of every car there um, series one flat floor uh, Jaguar E-Type 3.8 wow. that's a really nice car great history um, I, honestly if the steering wheel was on the right hand side it uh, it wouldn't be for sale I love this the ultimate sales technique which is you can have it but actually you can't have it so really justifying the product saying that it's so amazing that I actually don't really want to sell it and it's not for sale but because the steering wheel is not on the right side for me to keep it for myself you can have it if you want meanwhile in the background you'll notice Carl's father Tom touching someone on the shoulder this is a powerful sales technique for getting someone on your side well, I, I'd keep it I'd, I'd want an E-Type exactly there's a few E-Types actually yeah. around the other side I don't know if you've seen I've, I've literally just walked in oh, okay. just walked yeah, in yeah, yeah. you may think the I've literally just walked in statement is a statement of fact and truth which it probably is but the beauty of it is the salesperson here, Carl, totally washes his hands of needing to know anything about any other car or dealer or anything else in the showroom, which is a beautiful sales technique again in itself because you are in fact kind of absolving yourself of needing to know or answer any other questions about anything that you may not know about. And this is something that he may have done consciously or not, but once again, it's a very good technique for not kind of being put on the spot when somebody asks you a question about something that you may not know anything about. And we have the best DB6 Volante for sale in the world. You heard that first, Without people. doubt, without <laughs> doubt, without doubt. He sounds like a salesman. Come in, I'll show you it. <laughs> Oh my god, oh my god, I can't believe it. I know, there's ropes. VIP. <laughs> Gotta keep so the public sad. away, you see. We're not, we're not our guests of honor. As a salesperson, especially if you're in public and being recorded, you have to be very careful as to what you say. So here Carl cracks a joke about we need to keep the public away, which is actually funny between friends or between high-end people, if you will but you probably should be a bit more careful and not crack a joke like that on camera because to the outside people, it may not come across as very funny, even though it is kind of funny. I'm gonna cut that bit out, obviously, aren't I? Because <laughs> <laughs> the public is who you are. Look, I mean, look at this. This is the only one, this is the only one finished in this color, which is called amethyst. After a quick recovery, we're back on to more amazing sales skills here. If you really notice, this is a sales skill here because this Aston Martin has a very strange color. After all, who would want to pay £600,000 and more for a what is basically a pink Aston Martin? But it's not a pink Aston Martin to Carl. To Carl, it's an amazing one-off unique color which is sales skills at the high end of things. Wow. It was owned from new by the fashion designer Stephen Marks, who is FC UK, French Connection. Oh, okay. Um, it's got a history file that you couldn't fit in the boot of this car. Wow. I mean, ridiculous. More sales lessons from Carl here. If you can attach a celebrity or a well-known person to a product, you've done a really good job of positioning that product really high which is what Carl does here by saying who owns this car or owned this car before a well-known person and a car this old you really want to have history with it and this car doesn't just have history but according to Carl it has so much history that it wouldn't even fit in the boot of the car again more reassurance by Carl of if you are in doubt about this particular model of just how good it is, 
having been owned by someone well known and having probably the most history of any Aston Martin. And it's had two owners from new. Two owners from new people. Oh, and it comes with a free LV. It comes um, with all my invoices yeah. and <laughs> very fancy pen. Nice. That, how nice is that? How much is that then? That is 650,000. Oh, only. Only. Shall I get the credit card out? <laughs> now, moving on to the surprise salesperson of the London Classic Car Show. I was walking on the top floor of the mezzanine and I was really not interested in buying anything at all. And here I went to a stand uh, where they were selling negative iron bracelets and watch what happened. Bracelets, whatever they are. Can you try? Try? Well, what's going to happen? How is your you balance? Is your My balance? Uh, it's all right. The girl noticed me at the stand and I was there for a few seconds and she came very fast and a good salesperson does not let you linger on too long because you could literally walk away, especially in a scenario like this in a show. So it's very important to get in quickly. It's better to get in quickly than later. And she was very good at coming in quick. And also, if you notice, she did not ask me an open-ended question where I could say a yes or a no to. She asked me a question where I had to give an answer. She said, how is your balance? There's a demonstration. Yeah. All right. Now we're gonna put this around. This way. Yeah, I'd rather film this. So. Here she has a lot of things going for her. She's attractive, she knows her products well, she's smiley and friendly and she has the ultimate gimmick for demonstrating the power of her product because when you stand and she tries to unbalance you it's quite easy for her to unbalance you but when you're wearing the bracelet as she demonstrated and she pushes hard to unbalance you it's actually incredible because you cannot fall off your balance and I experienced that myself and to add to the whole thing the demonstration involves a girl touching you as a guy and well there you go that's a closer in itself for most guys so what's it supposed to do it has magnets minerals 20,000 negative ions on it every day we get a lot of positive ions electricity radiation we go to a shopping mall, 10 minutes later we get tired. It cleans your body from all this exhaustion we get from outside. So it's like grounding in a way, but more intense. Yeah. Uh, they all go for nine years, you can take a shower in it. In general, people use it for exercise or some kind of joint. So it's to balance your body out, is it? It's not just a balance, it's just a demonstration is to show you that it's working. Here she comes with some powerful sales techniques. Knowledge, which she clearly is very knowledgeable on the product she's selling and proof another powerful technique for selling of how other people are using it and why so many people are using it and how they use it proof 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 that hey buddy you're on your own if you don't want this because lots of people are using it price good for flexibility concentration sleeping quality and how much are they uh, the prices are between 40 to 60 beautiful sales techniques once again this product doesn't just have one benefit but it has this benefit and this one and this other one just hitting the customer with all the benefits they're getting and when asked about the price again she is very skilled because she doesn't say a top end or a bottom end she gives you a range so that should in theory fit within all budgets really great sales techniques
don't underestimate this lady here because she's powerful. Pants on the side. Okay, but I'm still not clear as to what does it do. So if I was to wear this lady, it just what recharges so my energy. So it gives you more energy. So let's say if you were in, in the mountain, rather than the sea, there's no electricity around you. You sleep better, balance better, concentrate better. It's the same idea. So because you have a better blood circulation. More sales techniques. If the customer is dumb or doesn't understand what the product is for, you don't patronize them or lose patience. You explain. And here she uses another sales technique, which is giving a completely different example to prove her product's worth and her point of view. Because clearly the customer, being me, still doesn't understand what the product does. So she gives a different perspective and a different example. Amazing sales skills. But we get a lot of exhaustion from um, outside. So I've had a very interesting uh, demonstration of something I wasn't even interested in by this lady of these um, bracelets. And, um, but what are they made of? What material is it? For example, this is titanium plated. It doesn't spark. That black one? Yeah. And how much is that? Uh, this one is 50 pounds. Okay. Uh, let's say something like this costs 40 pounds. But this is stainless steel. And how do you... Um, Adjust that. Do you so adjust I do, that? I do adjust that. Try the here. same thing. Huh? Okay, give me that Resist one. Resist me. Resist go. Resist me. Sold by the beautiful lady. <laughs> it didn't fall. Thank you. Okay. Let me size it. Sorry, for the quality. Infrared magnet. Notice, much like Carl, she also looks around for other prospective customers as she's talking to you. I have to say, her demonstration was very impressive. But she's making the classic sales mistake of not taking the money first. <laughs> now I say this jokingly, not taking the money before you damage and destroy your product is potentially a mistake, but it is also an amazing sales technique. Although the product has now been sold, but it shows trust in the customer and further holds you to buying that product. So I consider this a good sales technique in this occasion. Actually, <laughs> I don't like to push people. <laughs> I must uh, look very trusting. <laughs> I tell you what, I'll be back later. <laughs> yes, Up to you. It'll be 60 pounds if you come back later. <laughs> okay, so she's not as funny as Carl, but she tried. I see one of them. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have walked around this side. It's just cost me 50 pounds. So people wear them all the time, do they? Most of the people, they don't take it off. I, I don't wear it when I'm sleeping because I'm fussy about wearing jewelry. Wow, she doesn't stop. Another great sales technique of the salesperson saying they actually use the product themselves. Okay. Uh, in the morning, I put it on. Yes, right. There you have it. Sold a bracelet that I wasn't looking for and I didn't really want. Great sales techniques. And Carl, of course, is another great salesperson. It's a lot easier to sell a 50 pound bracelet than a 650,000 pound car at a show. So um, I hope you've learned from this video and these um, different salespeople and the analysis that I did on them. And if you like this video, please comment below of what you would like to see in the future and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.